Okay, here we are on the way, Friday, November 30th, on the way to day five of the UN bribery trial of U.S. versus Ho. But on the way here at the criminal court, the sound of saws sounds strangely like a religious drone. No, no, no. But I digress. There, Foley Square in the courthouses, the Thurgood Marshall Courthouse, Second Circuit. We've been there. Actually, Inner City Press has argued a case there. But we're going behind it to the more modern pa- Daniel Patrick Moynihan Courthouse, where for five days the UN has been exposed as a cesspool of corruption, not just of financial corruption, but of weapons dealing in the name of a sustainable development, in the name of everything that Antonio Guterres and his deputy talk about routinely while covering up arms sales. It's been exposed. UN accredited, still accredited, unaudited by Guterres, China Energy Fund Committee offered weapons. Yes, weapons. Weapons to Chad. Weapons to South Sudan. Weapons to Libya. These weapons kill people, and Big Tony is covering it up. Big Tony, of course, is Antonio Guterres. Um, It's not an insult. He's a man who can have journalists thrown in the street. He's a man who single-handedly single-handedly runs the UN into the ground. We're going to wait here because it's a, there's a big construction site on Worth Street. Plus, what a nice view down of Chinatown. And so, yesterday, Gadio, the government's main witness in this trial, so far, Gadio was exposed. Gadio on creation was... There was some light punching by uh, Edward Kim. Of course, not physical. Just asking him, do you recall? Can I refresh your recollection? There was a few stumbles. It was seeming kind of like a letdown. And then, boom! Edward Kim asked Sheikh Gadio, didn't you take 10 million CFA francs from an unnamed courier, from an unknown businessman? He said, but I'm from West Africa. Then he said, yes, I did. Then he said, but I don't want to name the businessman. And the court broke. I ran downstairs, grabbed this phone from where it stays locked up on the first floor. Periscope, tweet. Let's go this way then. We might as well. It's a stand-up. It's a walking stand-up. It's not a stand-up. It's a walk-up. Okay, we tweeted it out. He took the money. After all of this talk about why do people believe we're taking bribes and pan-Africanism, he just took money from a businessman. When I got back upstairs, the businessman's name wasn't wasn't given because the idea was that he could somehow be retaliated against by Mackie Sal, who, unbeknownst to apparently the prosecution or the defense, Gaddy was supporting Mackie Sal. So it's a strange argument. Anyway, when he left that door, which you can, well, you can't see it, coming up upon it, waiting outside with Hong Kong media, Apple, etc., out came Gaddio, and I asked him, how did it go today? How do you think it went today? No answer. I said, are you still running for president of Senegal? No answer. Then he started pushing photographers. Now, the question is, is that covered by the non-prosecution agreement? Or shouldn't the U.S. Attorney's Office provide some kind of basic training to its witnesses, particularly if they're given non-prosecution agreements instead of having to plead guilty like Francis Lorenzo did? Although I've heard he's still out. I've heard that people still see him around the U.N. It's too bad that these cases can't clean up the U.N. Then again, Antonio Guterres is so corrupt, what could change him? Well, I believe that 21 stories a day in the freezing cold will change him. That's my belief. Okay, we're going in. Today, we hope the prosecution has shifted forward onto the Uganda scheme. Sam Kutessa, his wife, and Yauri Museveni, the president, taking money. There's the door from whence Gadio began his reign of terror in Chinatown. To be continued. Okay, here we are. There's been a break in the Patrick Ho, U.S. versus Patrick Ho, U.N. corruption trial. And I want to tell you, the stuff that's coming about it, about Uganda today and about the UN is shocking and disgusting. The UN is corrupt. So the witness today, day five of the trial, is Agent Galicia of the FBI. She's running through documents about how the China Energy Fund Committee, a UN accredited NGO, approached Sam Kutessa and purchased him in order to purchase oil, banks, and other materials in Uganda. But it's much more extensive than it has been previously known. For example, Patrick Ho had a 
first contacted Arthur Kafiro. This is a gentleman inner city press before being banned from the UN wrote about. He was the chief of staff of Kutessa, who Kutessa, when he left, tried to pr place in DPA uh, against all rules. Mr. Kafiro arranged a meeting between, between Patrick Ho, Sam Kutessa, and Sam Kutessa's son Isaac in the PGA's office, that is on the second floor, right next to the Security Council. For three hours, this now imprisoned UN briber met with the PGA on that office. And what I want to say is that until I started covering this case, I was free to walk up and down that hall and see who was going in. Then, under Antonio Guterres, they confined me to a minder, so I could only go there with somebody to watch me, who ever asked me, what are you looking for? And finally, under Antonio Guterres, the defender of corruption, the, the least transparent Secretary General ever, and that includes Kurt Volpheim, I was thrown out. So apparently, they think no one will know what they're doing in there, selling weapons to Chad. But I do know. I'm at the courthouse. Now, what else happened? Before that, still finishing up with the, with the, the Chad scheme, they showed the website of CFC, which has since been taken down. And on that website, there's a picture of Bill Clinton. We'll follow up on that. There's a number of See, they're showing these exhibits just to show to stay closely, but CFC was buying all kinds of people, and it's all in the emails. There's an Israeli oil company. There's a Croatian oil company. There's a slew of names that we're going to be Googling, but what the purpose of this report is to say Sam Kutessa, meeting in his residence with his son Isaac, what put, was put on, on parade. Patrick Ho just called up Kafiro and said, I want to speak at the UN, and there it was. Who's buying the UN now, and why, what is Antonio Guterres hiding? To be continued. Okay, here we are. Now, the lunch break. Day five, UN bribery trial, U.S. versus Patrick Ho, in which it was described how Patrick Ho, of the still UN accredited China Energy Fund Committee, how Patrick Ho pitched Edith Kutessa, the wife of the PGA, Sam Kutessa, on CEFC's many purchases made in the Czech Republic a football club, a brewery, a radio station. This is how China Energy Fund Committee swoops into a country. Now, what was not said, because that's not the focus of the trial, is that the head of ECOSOC, even after Patrick Ho was arrested, was the Czech ambassador to the UN, that Ye Jimin, the chairman of CEFC, was a personal advisor, may, maybe still be, even in his new status, uh, to the Czech president, that it was a country, down on its luck, purchased by a corrupt Chinese jet set. Now, there was some discussion of them trying to go with a um, trying to go with a jet and cash, as they did in Chad. But in this case, they wired $500,000 into a foundation, quote-unquote, run by Sam Kutessa at Stanbic Bank in Uganda. The wire transfer was made through HSBC. HSBC, totally corrupt. Even, even Mashrek Bank in Dubai closed uh, Bubkar Gadio's account based on these, these uh, dubious transactions. But HSBC, the bank to El Chapo, the bank to drug dealers and terrorists worldwide, HSBC, no problem. Money in a suitcase. Okay, to be continued, we're going to go write a story out of the drizzle. The UN is corrupt, and Antonio Guterres censors the press to try to allow more arms deals and more corruption. And we stand opposed. Based on the UN charter, Antonio Guterres should be impeached. Okay, here we are, day five of the UN bribery trial. U.S. versus Patrick Ho. It's Friday, November 30th, and in the afternoon session, finally the audio tape of Patrick Ho discussing negotiating quid pro quo with um, Sherry Ann was played for the jury. We can say this clearly. We can say that Associate One on the transcript is Shi Wei Yan, that is to say Sherry Yan, a woman who bribed UN Department of Public Information to have a one-man sh one show for her father in the UN lobby. The UN links get closer and closer, the corruption closer to the bone. PGA Kutessa selling a bank, taking $500,000 for his constituency. Where did it go? Where is Bobby Wine on this one? There's one more leg of this trial, and then it'll all be over. To be continued. Okay, here we are. Day five and week one of the UN bribery trial, U.S. versus Ho, has concluded. Um, it was a little more technical than usual today, a bunch of emails. But among the emails introduced by special FBI special agent slash email maven Galicia were 
email showing that the UN knows exactly when Patrick Ho and presumably everyone else, including Shea Gaddio and other bribers, have gone into the UN because they have a whole chart of which days Patrick Ho went into the UN. And although it was just flashed on the screen, we're going to end up getting this exhibit as we did in the Yang Lav Seng case because it raises many interesting questions about the United Nations. Also, there was some back and forth within the China Energy Fund Committee about how to not give credit to the UN for their million dollars. They purchased the UN. The UN was purchased by China Energy Fund Committee. Now, the day ended with a rather ineffective cross-examination of Agent Galicia by defense lawyer uh, Rosenberg, partially because the judge shut down most of the questions. It's difficult to know. All she was doing is she made a chart based on emails. Now, the $500,000 were given to Kutessa. It's been pointed out that Kutessa is not come really setting foot in the U.S. anymore. And if I was him, I might not, because it's pretty clear what took place. But what we can say, there's one thing that's clearer than anything else. And what's clear here is that the U.N. is corrupt. The U.N. has tried to cover up that it's turned itself into nothing more than a venue and a, and a, and a, a whorehouse for the sale of weapons to dictators. Yes, China Energy Fund Committee offered weapons, drones and tanks, to Idris Deby of Chad, a military coup leader. And the UN, all it can do is sort of keep track of who enters its whorehouse with a swiping card and try to throw out the press. We're going to get to the bottom of this. And based on negligence and collusion, Antonio Guterres should resign or be impeached. This will be continued.